Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Okay, you guys. So for this project, I've decided, I know, I'm a hot mess, but um, I want to use the recycled mesh stencil. And this one um, is like mechanical gears. And I've used this one several times already, but you can reuse these over and over again. As long as you're nice to them and you clean them up right away, you can reuse them. And I just got in like yesterday um, some paste from Posh Chalk. So I'm going to use the Posh Chalk metallic paste with my stencil over the piece of wood, but I'm gonna use some Wise Owl Glaze to um, stain my wood before I do um, the artwork with the stencil. That's the plan. And I just came up with it, really. So I'm gonna take um, my glaze and just put a little bit here on my plate. And let's see, I have a small brush here. Look at my brushes are abused so bad. I want to say this is an F40. So this is a flat 40 brush from Klingon. So I'm going to take this and just apply it right over the surface of um, my wood. And I'm putting my glaze on here, but I don't want it to dry. So I'm going to wipe it back before it starts to dry on my wood. So I'm just going to wipe that back and see how beautifully that stains my wood without my having to um, wait 72 hours for it to dry or without um, having to deal with any kind of serious um, fumes here in my shop. And then we are going to work on these feet. So I'm gonna sand these a little bit because um, there's a finish on here. So if I go right over the top of this with glaze, it's not gonna do anything. So um, I'm just gonna sand these just a little bit. I'm not gonna sand all of the finish off. Um, I probably could, but I don't want to. <laughs> That's too much work, you guys. I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna sand it just to knock the finish off of it. So now that I've sanded off the majority of the finish, meaning all of the shiny bits that were on here, I sanded that off. Now I have raw wood. So this color to me is more pleasing. It looks more modern. Um, these are like super warm and I want to tone them back just a little bit. So I'm going to take my glaze and go over these. Um, and because I took off the majority of the finish, it'll absorb the glaze and that'll help knock back some of that warmth. Um, that I see on these. And I actually think that I'm going to almost paint these using this glaze. Um, I'm going to have a relatively dry brush, you guys. And I'm going to paint this glaze on and then I'll go over it and seal it so that they aren't as warm as they are right now. So now we're ready to put our artwork on here. You guys, I did while I was drying it, I took my brush and I dabbed on some extra um, glaze around the edges because I thought it made it look really cool and gave it some more depth. You guys know I love a good halo, right? Um, and so my next product I'm going to use is chalk, um, is posh chalk. It's a metallic paste and this is charcoal. And I'm going to use my spatula from Iron Orchid Design to put my chalk paste through my stencil. And then this is my Roy Cycled um, stencils. Um, and it's going to be more, it's going to be less like, um, I really created this to be more like a texture. So we're going to be adding like an industrial texture to this piece. Hopefully it'll be really organic um, in how it's applied. So like I said, I've used this stencil before. Um, I want to say this is about the, let's see, I see white, I see black. So this is at least the third time I've used this stencil. Generally, you can get up to like six uses out of each of the stencils. Um, if you treat them the way I do, if you take extra care, you can get even more uses out of them. But it's going to be a little tacky. 
when I put this on here. And these stencils are 11 by 14, so they're a lot larger than some of the other mesh stencils that you see on the market. But I am going to put this down. It's not wide enough to go over the entire piece, so I'm gonna be really mindful about not having an end with any sharp edges. So I'm gonna put this on this side, and then I'll probably go in and add some more on the other side. I'm gonna use white paint, you guys. I'm gonna use regular chalk paint um, with this stencil. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on here, a little bit of paint. When I put it on my screen, I'm not gonna put it right over any of the design. I'm actually gonna put it over a blank portion of the screen and then pull it into the design. And just like when you're stenciling, um, you want to use a little bit of paint because you don't want it to go underneath um, your piece. And so I'm just using a little paint. You guys can see what I have here on my spatula. And I'm laying my paint down in areas where there is no design. And then I'm pulling it into um, or onto my screen or onto my design. And it doesn't look like I washed mine really well the last time because that one didn't come through really well. But you see how it's just a texture. I just think that's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm going to add some more on this side over here. I just have to figure out what's going to make sense um, aesthetically. And I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side. I'm always unloading. Uh, away from the actual design. Sorry, I laid that down. That's too much paint. And then I'm going to drag that paint into the designs that I'm wanting to pick up. This one's going to cross a little bit, but I think that's going to be cool because there's just a number right there. So now I have this really cool um texture more than anything it doesn't really look like a stencil i'll be honest i didn't clean my stencil really well the last time so this design the screen was clogged and so that's why you're not seeing a lot of the design come through but i think this pattern is going to be perfect i'm going to hit this with some heat really quick um to dry it and then i'm going to do a really light coat of glaze over this and then we'll be ready to assemble our tray we have our insert it's dry it's ready to go i love the distressed gears on here i think it's fabulous um i have my feet i did dry brush them and i just glaze i mean i just sealed them so they would be protected and so we have our tray here and you guys remember this was just a grill tray right and we're going to drop our insert in here and I'm gonna glue the feet onto the bottom really quickly though. So I did go over you guys and just dry brush this with a little bit of glaze. It was just looking a little bit too stark for me, the white. Um, and so I just picked up like very, very little um, glaze on my brush and just really dry brushed it over the top um, of my stencil because I don't want it to push it back too far but I don't want it to look as stark as it looked on there. So that just makes it look more cohesive. And so there are places on my tray where there aren't any holes and so that's where I'm gonna put my glue. So I'm gonna put a lot of glue here in the middle and then there's places along the edges where I have opportunities to put glue as well. So I'm gonna put the E6000 down first because um, this is really what's gonna be what holds my tray in place. And so now I'm going to go in with my hot glue and just put enough on there so that it doesn't move until that E6000 sets up. Although these Gorilla Glue Sticks are pretty good, you guys. Okay, I think I, I, think I put enough glue. <laughs> maybe, maybe enough glue. I really don't want this to come off. Um... So I'm just gonna sit, drop this in there. And um, we're done, you guys. This tray is so cute. 
This is going to go um, on my kitchen island. I'm going to find something heavy to sit on top of this until this um, cures, just to make sure that um, it adheres really well. So for this clipboard, I'm thinking that the I want to make it black. So we'll start off with the Black Wise Owl Chalk Synthesis Paint um, to paint the top of this board. So I'm just going to take the Chalk Style Paint and paint it right over the top of this. So um, I'm going to paint this with the um, mohair. If you guys are looking for a similar color to this one, Restoration would be the color that's currently available. Um, and I'm just using a simple craft brush, you guys, to apply this paint. And I always paint light colors under my decoupage um, because it makes the images on your decoupage paper pop. So I picked the makeup brush. If I had more brushes that were not in like, jar purgatory <laughs> I would probably be using like my O35 which is my clean on brush for this but for today I'm going to be using this little makeup brush and I'm just going to dab on that glaze around the edges I love a good halo I think it brings depth to pieces uh, visual depth so the dark will uh, recede and the light in the middle will expand and visually it'll look like this piece has depth where there isn't any. So that's why I like to create a nice halo on a lot of my work. And so now that I trim this, I have to decide um, what I want to show on my actual clipboard. I'm probably going to end up here. So I'll lose some of my typewriter, but I'll keep the bulk of that. Um, and I'll still get to maintain some of the topography here. So what's happening is the reason why it's bunching is because of the clip right here. So I am just going to trim it right where that clip is. So I'm gonna cut it straight for right now and then I'll deal with the angle in a few minutes. Because I have to be able to visualize it, you guys. Although I need to do it now, don't I? I believe it's this way. We're gonna do it this way and we're gonna hope that that's right. So just to recap on that, a sharper cut is better um, than the more shallow cut. And it's not a deal breaker. I'll just go in and put another little piece there. It'll look finished when we're all done. But if you want it to wrap around your clip, you can do a really sharp cut and then that way it wraps around and you can just glue it once we get to the top. We're just gonna decoupage this the same way we do other times, you guys. I am using one hour, um, um, one hour enamel in matte. The reason I'm using the one hour enamel on this specific project is because I'm thinking that I may wanna go over the top of my decoupage with some of the Iron Orchid Design transfers. And I find that the transfers really do love the one hour enamel, which means they adhere really well um, and really quickly to the one hour enamel. I do have several videos with detailed instructions on how to decoupage. Um, if you would like to see those videos, you guys can find them here. And so this top portion is the portion that hasn't been decoupaged just yet. So we're gonna do the same thing we've done with the rest. We're gonna put product underneath there and then um, we're gonna lay it down and make sure that there's good adhesion. I just wanna make sure that I cover that really, really well. And I'm doing the same thing here. I've, I've offloaded my brush and now I'm going in right next to the paper to make sure that I have product there and that I don't end up with a bubble. Okay. So I'm just gonna go in you guys and rub that down. Now I have these two areas at the top that don't have any coverage. So I'm just gonna go in and add a piece of paper. Um, I'm gonna try and put something that kind of makes sense. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to look like um, it belongs there, right? And I'm just scoring this angle so I can cut it. Because, I mean, I want it to be close to it as much as possible. Okay. 
And I'm going to use my small brush for this. That is my project for today. I'll probably add a butterfly tomorrow. Tomorrow, I won't do it today. I'll add a butterfly up here tomorrow and then we'll post a picture of our final project. But. So I have different size bottles here and I have a few Crocs here and we are going to put some transfers on them and make them fabulous. So much fun. And I know it's hard to see the white transfers because, well, they're white. Um, but when we put them on the dark surfaces, you guys will be able to see them. I'm thinking I'm going to use it on this bottle that has the speckles on it because it's kind of speckled on one side. So I'm going to put the transfer like right in the middle on this side. So now that I have my bottle all nice and clean, you guys, I can adhere my transfer. This is gonna be super easy. You just take your transfer, you decide where you wanna put it. Um, the transfers love glass because glass is super smooth, so you do not wanna touch your surface until you're absolutely ready, um, until you've made your decision that that is exactly where you wanna put your transfer. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put my transfer on my bottle. This is gonna look so fabulous. I'm way too excited, I know, but um, this project is so me. And so each of your transfers comes with a stick like this. And so you're gonna use this to kind of burnish your transfer. Um, you're basically rubbing it off of your backing paper and onto your surface. And so you wanna go over um, the entire transfer. Now this one has a lot of little topography on it, so you may have to be a little bit more patient than you are with the larger transfers to really make sure um, that you rub them down onto your surface. I love the grid lines that um, Iron Orchid Design has on their transfers because it really helps you to make sure that you've gone over the entire transfer. Now, once you've gone over the whole thing, um, you're just going to start lifting your transfer up very slowly. If there's a part that didn't stick, you simply um, lay your backing paper back down and go back over that piece. Um, and you just keep on doing that until you've finished. So you never want to just rip your backing paper off. You really want to take your time um, and make sure that everything is adhering well. Because you can go back and fix it. And isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. Love it. I'm going to take my backing paper and lightly rub my transfer. And this is just to make sure that all the portions of the transfer um, are making good contact with the surface so that I don't have any issues with my transfer lifting or anything later. Fabulous! I love it. I love it. Isn't that, and so this is just a plain bottle, right? But now it's something super special. And so you can put greenery or something in this and use it in a tablescape or a centerpiece. And it will be gorgeous. And I just love the brown bottles. I think they're perfect for the fall. So look how quickly we were able to transform um, these three like relatively plain things um, to make them look like super special. I just love the pots transfer and I know it's because I love topography and I love um, having such an easy way to add topography to my projects. But my name is Royce Hunt Bell from Recycled Treasures. If you guys enjoy our tutorials, be sure and subscribe to our channel. If you hit the bell, you'll actually get an alert every time we upload a new video, which is generally once a week, sometimes twice a week. Um, you guys can absolutely do anything that you guys see me doing today. You can do this. You can do it today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed day.